Max, and welcome to the Cardano Community Podcast. Today, I'm glad to tell you that Rebecca Asse, a cryptocurrency journalist, is here with me to talk about Cardano's uh, adoption in Africa. We will talk about Cardano's adoption in Africa, the potential of Cardano in Africa, and if Cardano has the potential of competing with Facebook's Libra. Please give some feedback, whether it's positive or negative, we want it. Besides, we're still looking for people who want to write in the Cardano community publication. So if you want to write something about Cardano, please submit the form uh, which you can find in the description. Okay, Re Rebecca, welcome on the podcast. Yeah, thank you. We really appreciate the fact that you were able to come. So please present yourself a bit uh, to our fellow adapters. Okay, my name is uh, Rebecca Asse. Uh, I'm from Nigeria and uh, I'm a crypto journalist. Uh, basically, what I do is um, try to um, talk about cryptocurrency and the blockchain sphere to, you know, uh, the unbanked. Like, yeah, I like to put it that way. And in a language that they would understand easily. Um, I came to understand that um, in the crypto sphere, everybody just wanted to be all about what they could gain about the Gain from, gain from cryptocurrency and nobody yeah. was concerned about you know what this unbanked we're actually getting from crypto so and uh, i started doing um you know videos uh on cryptocurrency in pidgin english pidgin english is like um uh well it's not our official language in nigeria mm -hmm. but it's more like the language of the people it's a very common yeah. language everybody yeah, speaks yeah, yeah. Pidgin. everybody speaks pidgin in nigeria so it's just like broken english so yeah. that's what we speak everybody speaks it it's easy for for people to understand it it's like language of the streets so if we are talking about getting cryptocurrency to be unbanked then i think it's it's better to start you know speaking in their language you know we go for events and all people say you know it's technical terms and you know in blockchain events for developers and for enthusiasts these people are not the ones who the blockchain technology and the cryptocurrency is for. Cryptocurrency is actually for inclusion. So if we're talking about inclusion, then I think we should bring, you know, the unbanked that we are really talking about into cryptocurrency. So that was why I started, um, you know, uh, talking about cryptocurrency in Pigeon and trying to make people aware of what cryptocurrency is. Currently in uh, Nigeria, we really don't have that much of a widespread of it. Yes, I know in Africa, we are kind of like the top buyers of Bitcoin at the moment, but it's just, it's more like, you know, uh, you know, a small segment of people buying where a large amount of people should actually be involved in it. So basically that's what I so, and as size that I also, you know, write about cryptocurrency, I'm a cryptocurrency writer, I'm blockchain writer, and all that. So that's basically all, all you need to okay. know about me. Uh, that was uh, really interesting. Um, speaking of adoption of crypto cryptocurrency in Africa, what's your vision about the adoption strategy of Cardano in Africa? You know, IOHK uh, is currently uh, educating people in Uganda, Ethiopia. Um, there are educational programs and partnerships with local governments. What do you think about it? What's your vision about it? Well, uh, the adoption of um, the, the um, vision of Cardano for Africa is really a wonderful vision. And I think Charles is really, really putting in a lot of work towards, you know, getting in widespread and getting the widespread of Cardano in Africa. But the way I see it, I feel, you know, more work should be done. And I think people need to be more aware that there are other options of cryptocurrency out there. And they need to be aware of the potentials that this cryptocurrency possesses. That is Cardano at the moment. So um, ever since I've been in Nigeria, um, basically what we talk about here, it's Bitcoin. Everybody goes for events and everybody's talking about nobody. Most people don't even know any other thing besides Bitcoin. So I think, you know, more work mm -hmm. needs to be done. Uh, yes, we know Bitcoin is the first cryptocurrency. And we know, yes, Bitcoin has a lot of potential. But we also need to understand that there are other cryptocurrencies out there that could do way, way, way more and are even doing better. So... Uh, basically, I feel um, a lot of work still needs to be done on education. You know, they need to really, really double up on the work on education. 
okay uh, that was uh, again really interesting um do you you know F facebook facebook uh announced the launch of uh, their new cryptocurrency called libra do you think that because, because cardano is in a certain way a kind of competitor to libra because libra is trying to reach the unbanked which cardano is actually also doing uh, especially in africa do you think that cardano has the potential of competing with libra is is uh, and has Libra also the a chance of real competing with Cardano and becoming a success, success a, a, sorry a successful cryptocurrency uh, in Africa? Well, that was why I mentioned education in the first place. Now, um, one of the most popular um, apps in Africa is Facebook. Everybody knows Facebook. Mm -hmm. my, my grandma knows Facebook. I met a lot of my cousins on Facebook. I've never met them in real life, but I met yeah. them on Facebook. So now the, the problem with Facebook now is the fact that, first and foremost, I just have this feeling that Facebook liberal is not going to, you know, um, when I say come into existence, mm -hmm. like maybe I think they are going to um, nip it in the board. I don't think it's going to uh, raise its head because first and foremost, Facebook has issues with privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, people who know a lot about the inner workings of Facebook are skeptical of it. Now, but the unbanked, most people don't know anything about All they know is, oh, I can see my granddaughter on mm. Facebook. Yeah. So they don't care. All they care about is, uh, okay, send your sister a message on Facebook, you know, but they don't really know the inner workings of how, uh, what Mark is trying to do. But I feel Facebook isn't going to, and um, liberal isn't going to, um, I don't think uh, it's going to come into a decision. I don't think so. Besides that, I feel Cardano uh, can compete with liberal. Uh, yes, it can. First and foremost, liberal hasn't started yet. Uh, it's mm -hmm. still going to launch in 2020. That is yeah. if it goes according to plan. And Cardano still has from 2019 to 2020 to still beat Libra. So, and then when it comes to the um, point of reaching the unbanked, uh, well, I think Facebook has a wider reach because, you know, a lot of people know about Facebook. But Cardano still has, has from now till 2020 to still beat Libra. And uh, I think um, what, what we should work on right now is what like we, we need to start working as if liberal is already in existence. Yeah. So yeah. Um, um, Cardano enthusiasts need to start working yeah. like as if liberal is in existence. We need to start uh, working like we have a competitor mm -hmm. already. We need to start focusing on how to beat this competitor. And aside, beat, the thing actually is not about beating anybody in the market, in the crypto sphere anyway, but the thing is about getting these people educated about how they, are, they can have their financial power in their own hands. Because a lot of people, you know, where Facebook has gotten to, where cryptocurrencies have gotten to, the traditional banks have not gotten to that place. No, we have people who are still, you know, there's no bank. Okay, my auntie lives in a village in south, um, yes, southern Nigeria, mm -hmm. and there is no bank in that village. They don't have a bank, and they don't have a police station in that village. So they just money moves, cash moves from hand yeah. to hand, from hand to hand. So, but in that same village, my auntie's stepson has a phone that has Facebook on it. It chats yeah. me up on Facebook. So now you can see that the bank has not gotten up to the place where Cardano and Facebook can reach. So now we have to start working like there is a competi competition already. And mm -hmm. then we have to make sure that we beat this competition. First and foremost, what Cardano can offer to these people, Facebook can't. Yes, Facebook wants to be a global coin. Cardano is also a global coin. Yes, Facebook wants to offer people this and that. Cardano can still offer people that. But I also think that where Facebook fails, is in providing privacy for people. How 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 sure are people that Facebook is actually going to be decentralized? Is Facebook really decentralized, or is it just a form of centralization coming to present itself as a yeah. decentralized cryptocurrency to people? So I feel Cardano should start working now, like 
as if liberal is already in existence. So by the time 2020, um, it gets to the time when liberal is about to launch, liberal is going to be surprised at what is going to hit it in the face. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with that. I think that, you know, I think that it would be great if Cardano uh, was kind of a bit more privacy focused and that's the way to be able to compete with uh, currencies like Libra, which everyone knows will not be as private as other cryptocurrencies. Um, my last question for you is what's your vision about Cardano? Like, how do you think it will look like in five to ten years, and more specifically in Africa? Okay, uh, if I'm looking at Cardano from the point of view of Africa, in the next five years, I am expecting that when I walk the streets and I put on a Cardano, you know, a T-shirt with a Cardano inscription on it, I expect people to say, "Oh, I own Cardano." I don't want people to say, "What's that on your shirt?" And then I have to start explaining all over again. No, I want people to look at me and like, oh, I own Kadam. Can I get that T-shirt too? So that's something I am envisioning. I'm envisioning, you know, market women able to, you know, save their their earnings in Cardano. Mm -hmm. I'm envisioning people able to transfer, you know, cash from um, money from one aspect from one place to the other uh, to the other using Cardano. Uh, but for, for right now, we have a long way to go. But I do believe uh, that um, if we work together with one vision, I do believe that um, Cardano is going to have a huge fit and, and foothold in Africa. Yeah, I do believe it's going to have a huge foothold in Africa. People want to be financially liberated. People are tired of, you know, um, of inflation of their local currency they're tired of government controlling their money you know recently i i have this bank account that i don't understand why they keep taking my money out of my account why what did i do to the bank so you know people are tired of it there's always card maintenance there's always one thing or the other and all that. Mm. So I, I expect Cardano to have penetrated Africa up to a point where, all right, um, I in the next five years, yeah. I hope to walk on the streets and, you know, have people recognize Cardano. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's say I'm walking on the streets and I'm putting on a T-shirt that has, you know, a Cardano inscription on it. I expect people to look at that T-shirt and be like, oh, you own Cardano. I own Cardano too. I And uh, I also expect uh, people to be able to send you know um, Cardano to each other a mother should be able to send Cardano to a daughter who is in the university mm -hmm. uh, a, a father should be able to get medical aids for his son you know through Cardano we should be able to crowdfund using Cardano you know people should be able to oh I, I, um, I, I need to help this person this person has um, um, maybe uh, cancer, and then we can, you know, crowdfund for that person using Cardano. Um, I, I feel Cardano should, you know, have penetrated the uh, African um, um, African society uh, a whole lot more better than it is it has done currently in the next five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, that the only way it, that can happen is through education. You know a lot and lot of education and when i'm talking education i don't mean you know um um conferences where the only people in attendance are people who you know people who already know what cryptocurrency is about yeah. i think we need to take this thing to the people you know but the, i know a lot of people are actually skeptical about cryptocurrencies especially in africa they really don't understand what it is about and uh, we have had um, bad experiences with Ponzi schemes. So yeah. everybody just assumes that cryptocurrencies are Ponzi scheme. And also because, you know, the first adap uh, adapters of uh, adopters of uh, cryptocurrency in, um, you know, a lot of people have been misinformed. You know, now they feel, oh, if I bring in a um, thousand naira into cryptocurrency, I get 20,000 naira back. Wow. Mm. So now it's more like, you know, a, make, a money making machine for them. And they, yeah. they need to understand that cryptocurrency goes beyond just that. So 
I think we need to focus more on education, education and more education. Okay. Education, education, education. That's the key to success, uh, if I understood you well. Um, this was a real interesting interview. Uh, thank you very much, Rebecca, for being here. I know you are pretty busy, but uh, thank you for your time. We, uh, thank you. You're welcome. You, we really appreciate it. Uh, okay, so this was the interview. Thank you very much. And uh, please come back to the Cardano Community Podcast whenever you want.